Hi guys, today I'm going to give you a tour of the tomatoes and I'm also going to share some tips with you. This is my second year growing tomatoes on a cattle panel trellis. I shaped them into an arch like this. On the side of each cattle panel there's a T-post. The great thing about this method of staking is that your tomatoes can grow up as high as they want to without flopping over. We get a lot of fungal diseases here, mainly on the tomatoes septoria leaf spot and early blight. This is what septoria leaf spot looks like. It starts off as these little gray dots and as it spreads it'll take over patches of your leaves like this. Once I get septoria on a plant after we get a good rain it really spreads very quickly everywhere all over the plant. Early blight usually starts lower down on the plant, usually on the lower leaves. You can recognize early blight because it has a bullseye appearance. You'll see little circles with m more little circles inside those circles, kind of concentric rings. A lot of the time there's going to be a yellow halo around the little circles. The way to deal with these fungal diseases are to try and remove all the diseased foliage and a lot of times that can actually look like a lot of foliage and it's kind of scary but if you leave it on your plants it's really just going to keep spreading. Treat it with a fungicide. I used to use Dacanil on a regular basis. I've kind of backed off the Dacanil a little bit. I've only used it one time this year. In the past I had always stopped using the Dacanil once my tomatoes started to get to the point where they were ripening up. Dacanil coats the leaves of your plants and prevents the fungal spores from sticking to the leaves. This year and last year I've started using hydrogen peroxide and water. Hydrogen peroxide kills the fungal spores. I've been spraying it about once a week and it's the 3% hydrogen peroxide that you can buy at any pharmacy. I mix 3 quarters cups of hydrogen peroxide with 1 gallon of water and then spray that all over my plants. If you decide to try the hydrogen peroxide I would recommend starting off with a half a cup per gallon of water. I don't want anybody getting mad at me saying their plants got burned. I'm spraying that once a week and it was working pretty well. I'm starting to see a lot of septoria popping up. So I'm not really ready to say that I love this stuff yet. It does seem to help. It's going to rain today so I'm definitely going to see some septoria spread. So after it rains, maybe later on this evening, I'm going to come out here and I'm going to spray some serenade on my plants. Serenade's organic and so I'm experimenting with a few different things. I may even start alternating the serenade with the hydrogen peroxide and see how that works. Maybe one week spray the serenade, the next week spray the hydrogen peroxide. I'm not a big fan of single stemming my tomato plants. I only tried it one time with two plants. I was not happy with the results at all. A lot of my tomatoes on those plants were sunburned. I felt like there was less tomatoes. My plants got septoria leaf spot and they died, which hardly ever happens with my plants. They almost always make it to the end of the season, even with the disease pressure. On each cattle panel, I plant four tomatoes, two on each side. As the plants start growing, I prune off some of the bottom foliage until I have about a one foot gap between the lower branches and the mulch. Above that point, I leave all of the suckers on the plants. If an area of the plant gets really thick and I start seeing a lot of diseases, so let's say that there's a lot of disease on this set of leaves here, I would just remove this entire branch right here and leave the suckers on. I'm not taking flowers off of my plant because flowers make tomatoes. I just harvested a bunch of tomatoes two days ago so I don't have a lot to pick but I want to show you some of the tomatoes growing here. This one is Berkeley tie-dye and these are the first of the Berkeley tie-dyes to ripen up. They have some cracks so I want to get those picked off before we get some more rain today. Here's what the green ones look like. They're really pretty. The biggest and healthiest tomato plant in my garden is this black cherry tomato plant. I love black cherry tomatoes. They have a very, very tomato-y flavor. Next we have some big beef. I just harvested some of these the other day. There's one. There's some more. These grow in nice little clusters. 
Sometimes there'll be four or five or more on a cluster. This one here is Daniel's. I really love this variety. I'm usually not a huge fan of this size of tomato. It's just kind of a weird size. I mostly like big beefsteak tomatoes and then just a few cherry tomatoes. But this variety is really good. It's very pretty. It's a pretty productive plant. There's lots of fruit clusters on here. I've only seen a few hornworms on my plant this year, including this one that's going into the pupa phase. But I have found a bunch of army worms on three different plants. I don't like to spray insecticide because it can harm beneficial insects. Even organic insecticides can harm beneficial insects. So I just tried to pick all of them off. I thought I got all of them off, but I guess I didn't because I found four different tomatoes the other day with army worms inside of them. So after I took those tomatoes off the plants, I did go ahead and spray some Captain Jack's spinosad. Spinosad will kill caterpillars, but it can also harm bees. It works best if you spray it at night anyway because it loses some of its effectiveness once it's exposed to sunlight. The good thing is there's not a lot of bees out pollinating at night. This one in this regular sized tomato cage is a dwarf purple heart tomato. This got planted quite a bit later than my other tomatoes, so they're not going to be ripe anytime soon. Let me see what I can find in here. Oh no, I'm sorry. This isn't dwarf purple heart. This one is dwarf wild spud leaf. See? Nice potato leaves. This one has to be the dwarf purple heart. These dwarf plants only grow three or four foot tall. This is a tiny Tim tomato plant. It's a micro dwarf. I had five of these in this planter, but I pulled them out because they were pretty much done to make room for more plants and more seeds. These plants are very productive. And that's going to be all for this video. I have 18 tomato varieties growing in total. The video is getting kind of long, so I couldn't really show them all to you, but I'm sure that you're going to see them in some future harvest videos. Let me know down in the comments how you deal with diseases on your plants. I know not everybody gets fungal diseases on their plants. That really is dependent upon your climate and your growing conditions. But we all face different challenges wherever we live. Let me know if you prune your plants or if you let them grow wild. Do you prune them just a little bit like I do? Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.